Ah. So when we do a brown stock, we take all those ingredients and we roast them off in an oven. And we don't just throw them in there all dry and nasty and everything. We lovingly oil up, you know, bones and meat and things like that, and also veggies. And we throw them into an oven with lots of surface area and dry heat, and we roast them until they're not blackened, but they're caramelized and they're sweet and delicious. And we will put all of that pot into a pot together and then we can go ahead and add water to it and simmer, simmer, simmer. And what we're doing is extracting flavor, right? And at the end of it, we get this dark, rich brown liquid that I can use for, you know, either a beef barley soup, you know, I can make a soup out of it, like a dark soup, or I could like de uh, uh, reduce it down and make sauces out of it or thicken it, or I can make soups or whatever out of it, gravies and all of that stuff, right? So that's kind of the brown stock method. We take ingredients and we brown them off and then we make a stock, right? The white stock, is, is much simpler. We don't brown anything off. Um, we do everything kind of all natural, if you will, right? So you can see I threw in my chicken bones. There is an additional step that's just gonna take too much time right now, but some chefs will wet these bones, bring them up to a boil, and then dump that water. You'll see the water gets kind of funky and skunky, and it's got a bunch of, uh, what the culinary, what the term we use in culinary arts is, it's got a bunch of scum on top, right? So you wanna get in there and you wanna lift that scum out of there, or uh, you wanna get in there and pre-blanch these bones and get that scum out of there, dump it all off, and then start with fresh water because the idea is really executing a crystal clear stock. That's what we're looking for here, right? And so sometimes we're gonna do this pre-blanching of bones, bring them to a boil and you know cover with water, bring it to a boil, and then dump that water and start up with fresh water, okay? We're gonna omit that step just because it's a short class and I gotta get to other steps. You I wanna talk about grilling too. So um, what I'm gonna do is I've got my bones in there, I also want to add some aromatics to it, okay? So you guys have been seeing some classic like French Western aromatics in all of these quarantine kitchens all along where I've been doing like bay leaf, thyme, garlic, you know, all of that stuff, right? So that's what you're getting ready to see. Oh, I started to pull my bay leaves out. Where are they? I didn't pull them all the way out. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. My bones are in there. I'm gonna throw in a bay leaf. Boo, boo, boo. Uh, um, uh, when you're making stocks, this is where I use up my busted up ugly bay leaves, right? That I don't need, that I can strain out of the pot. See that? It's almost bay leaf dust, right? So those are my low end crappy bay leaves and I threw a bunch of those in there. Um, and I saved my good looking ones for, for nice demos. So next, um, we've got that um, uh, thyme, right? So I mentioned thyme, I'm gonna be using fresh thyme, but if you guys got dry thyme, throw that on in there. It's that same profile we've been kind of talking about as we move around. Um, I've got some peppercorns, right? I got a bunch of peppercorns. That black pepper is part of your uh, French flavor profile. Uh, Ms. Roberta is asking about a clarified stock. Now, a clarified stock is a whole other class where what we'll do is we'll grind up a bunch of meat, we will add some egg yolks, or egg whites, not yolks, sorry. Um, egg whites, and all of this same stuff, thyme, peppercorn, bay leaf, all of that stuff, and we will bring that up to temperature and all of that egg white and meat reaches out and kind of grabs all of the impurities in the stock and it clarifies it and it all floats to the top and what you'll have underneath is crystal clear liquid that's also been fortified with all of the meat and other flavorings that you worked into it. When we talk about stock, stock is just a one step process and it's kind of weak. When we talk about broth, that's a fortified stock and and so, uh, oh my gosh, <laughs> uh, somebody just caught. Uh, so a broth is a fortified stock. And so whenever you do a consomme or something like that, you're fortifying it with all those extra ingredients and it's delicious and it's crystal, crystal clear. Consomme is really cool. That could be a whole other class though. Yeah, that's good stuff. Okay, I'm gonna do some garlic next, okay? I said it earlier, these garlic cloves I got, I'm not even gonna peel them or anything. All I'm gonna do is I'm going to smash them with the side of a knife. So let me get another knife. I don't want to use my chicken knife. And you guys can see those garlic cloves. Smashy smash, smashity smash. I think I got a few more just little end piece garlic cloves. And those are going in the stock pot. I'm not going to get much flavor if I don't give them a little crush though first. So those are going on in there. So far, classic French flavor profiles, right? Um, also, um, parsley stems are another classic French one. I was cleaning all kinds of parsley earlier for the class, and so I'm gonna throw those guys in. Um, mushroom stems, I trimmed a couple of mushroom stems I had in the fridge. Hey, I don't know what to tell you guys. I found them. I'm throwing in there little, little mushroom stems. Why not? It gives me a little dark umami goodness in my stock, right? Um, also, 
Um, let's see, I've got Mirepoix going in there. This is my classic stuff for a stock. So you guys saw me doing onions and all of that stuff earlier uh, in these classes, right? So I'm gonna bang those out again. I never pre-cut this stuff. I wanna kinda reinforce knife technique. I got the root end, I got the stem end. This is, this is familiar to a lot of you guys. I'm gonna take off the top and the bottom, the South and North America there, and then I got it on a flat end. I'm gonna cut it in half, and I'm gonna do that to another onion. I'm gonna start slanging these guys out. I'm looking at the time here, and cut them in half. So there's my onions. I'm gonna take these little end pieces, and guess what? They go in my stock pot too. Isn't that awesome how that works? And I had another couple over here. I almost didn't throw them in there. Let me get those. I'm gonna get rid of that paper there. I don't like this brown stuff. Too much of that stuff is gonna make my stock brown. Trevor, good to see you, sir, Mr. Rick. Right now, I'm just peeling those peels off and I got clean onion hemispheres. Everybody loves a hemisphere of onion. I remember when I was a kid, that was a treat. Mom, and send us outside with our onion hemispheres. <laughs> Oh, it's happy hour, guys. Come on now. Come on. Okay, I'm almost done peeling these onions, I swear. Sometimes they're a little uh, a little precocious, like myself. Okay, I got the peels off. Let me get all of that peel out of there. Again, I don't like this brown peel in my, uh, in my stock, unless I'm making brown stock or something, okay? And then these onions, I'm just gonna cut them big, okay? Uh, they're in quarters, so eight pieces per onion, right? But um, this is gonna be, this stock's probably gonna be cooking about two to four hours uh, with this chicken in it. That's your standard like poultry stock, two to four hours. So I cut my pieces fairly big. If I cut these really, really small, they would turn into baby food and then just start clouding up my stock. Okay, next I got some celery that's going in there. This, um, I, I put in onion and now I got celery. Anybody hear some mirepoix coming on? Uh, the carrot, celery, and onion that we see in much of French cuisine, okay? Or quite a lot of Western cuisine. So again, I'm chunking these up into fairly big pieces and I went a little heavy on celery. I like that in my chicken stock, to be honest. I don't care who knows it, but I do like some celery in my stock. I've got a little bit of a uh, carrot here. I'm gonna go ahead and peel this guy up, knock him out. And I'm putting a lot of veggies in here because I really don't have a lot of chicken bones. So I gotta bump up my veggies here. And also I have a little parsnip which looks just like a white carrot. And I'm gonna uh, donate maybe about two thirds of that to the pot here. And so again, big chunks. This is gonna be cooking for about two to four hours. That parsnip's gonna give it some nice background flavor that you don't expect to sneak up on you. Okay? So there goes some carrot in there. And then finally, the last little thing I'm really throwing in, it is, I'm hiccuping, sorry, is all of the scraps that I've been collecting all week long or all month long in these quarantine kitchens, and I've been putting them into a freezer bag and holding on to them. I'm not gonna throw that stuff away. This is all flavor. And this is kind of what we do in the restaurant industry too. It's not like we're throwing flavor away. And so you will see, um, you will see a collection of little bits and bobs either in a freezer or in a refrigerator, and we're making stock out of that stuff, okay? So that's all going in my pot too. Look at all that stuff. I'm not throwing that away. I've got onion peels. I've got the ends of carrots. Uh, there's some mushroom stems poking out over there. I got more garlic and tons and tons of herb stems. Herb stems are great because they give you the flavor of the herbs, but they don't give you the green chlorophyll out of the leaves. And that green chlorophyll after a while starts turning to black, okay? And so um, uh, stems are your friend when you're making these stocks, okay? So I've got the... Um, you saw me put in aromatics like bay leaf and peppercorns. You saw me throw in thyme, and then you saw me add uh, some garlic in there. I added mirepoix, and then I dumped in a bunch of scraps, okay? Underneath everything are my chicken bones. The next step for making a stock, cover all with cold water, okay? Very important. I think I talked about this in another class, too. 
You never want to use hot water out of the hot water tap for the food that you're cooking. It's been sitting in that nasty, skanky hot water heater of yours. It's all full of minerals and funk and rust and all of that stuff. You want that nice, good, clean, clear water, hopefully as good as we can get, out of your pipes, out of your cold water pipes, okay? Uh, if you have funky water in your city, it's gonna be doubly funky heating up in your hot water tap. And just think about this, when you're taking a shower, you don't exactly want to drink that water. That hot water tastes funky. So you know what I'm talking about. Okay, so everything is in my pot. I have covered all with water for, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. We just won't worry about that. So I've covered everything with water and I'm gonna go ahead and kick on the heat to 11, okay? I want this as hot as it can get. I got a ton of liquid here that I need to come up to a boil, okay? Um, so as that's coming up, I, uh, I can stir this to kind of redistribute everything and so that's what I'm gonna go ahead and do. I've got my little dipping spoon that I was using earlier. I'm gonna go ahead and do that and just make sure that everything's kind of under the water and it has, has water touching it, you know? But once it comes to a boil, I don't wanna stir it anymore because if I stir it, there's gonna be proteins in there on those chicken bones. These veggies are gonna be kind of cooking a little bit. And the more I stir it and agitate it and all of that stuff, the more that little bits of that are gonna kick off into that stock and cloud it, okay? We want crystal clear stock. So the idea here is we go all the way to a boil and then we go right down to a simmer. And then it's just on a back burner, just going bloop. Bloop, 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 just kicking back and extracting flavors at kind of a low temp there over a few hours of time, maybe four hours or so, and then you got yourself a stock. You're not going to get much more extraction after about four hours on poultry bones and vegetables, okay? You go much longer and it's just going to start getting cloudy and you're losing flavor into the air, okay? So that's basically what we're looking at at this stock. Next step, when this comes to a boil, I mentioned scum earlier. There's going to be some funk on the surface of this, especially since I didn't pre-blanch my bones. So we're going to go in there with a spoon. We're going to skim off that scum and, ex and get rid of that stuff because that will cloud our stock as well. Let's see, approximately how many chickens does it take to get the technique down? Oh gosh, um, uh, well, gosh, that's up to the individual, I think. Uh, I'll just say five, you know. If you do about four or five of these things, I bet you you'd kind of be pretty comfortable with breaking down chickens, you know. That's, that's not unusual, oh, not, or not, not um, uh, uh, unreasonable, right? And so um, let me just do another little scene change here. I had a spill over here, so I got to take care of that as well. So let me do that. And we're going to get into grilling next because our stock is hanging out and cruising. It's just going to come up to a boil and then we just got to do a little maintenance to it. So scene change. You guys uh, talk amongst yourselves, play a little music in your head, and uh, I'll see you on the other side of this scene change. Like I said, I have a little spill here. Okay, but it's good that this happened. I'm glad it happened. Now we know the capabilities of this studio. The home kitchen quarantine studio. Oh yes, Ms. Jennifer or Barbara, thanks for showing up you too. Ms. Roberta, good to see ya. Okay, let's see. Uh, would I do four hours if it was just a veggie stock? Excellent question. I just did a class this weekend and I covered veg stock uh, two days ago. Veg stock is usually, I, what I always say about veg stock, veg stock is like making a cup of tea. So I'll throw the veggies in the pot without the bones. I bring it up to a boil and reduce it to a simmer and I go about 10 minutes or so and I'm done. Any more than that, your, your veggie stock's just gonna start tasting old and bitter. Another thing about veggie stock, cut those uh, pieces really, really small because we want to get a quick extraction out of them. These are going for like four hours, so we want big pieces. Um, little pieces for a 20 minute stock seems reasonable. You'll get really fast extraction out of it. Make sure you hit that boil though, right? You hit a full boil and then a good simmer for 10 minutes and you're done. It's super easy to make veggie stock. I always say it's like making a cup of tea, okay? Uh, let's see. Girl from Ipanema music. Oh my God, that would be so perfect. I got a buddy that actually uh, uh, has an Ipanema band and uh, that'd be perfect. I keep twisting his arm, but we haven't really done it yet. 
Maybe when we get the nightclub uh, 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 gig for this. That's the dream. Get this in a nightclub with the Ipanema band. Okay, I'm still on 11 with my stock pot. There's still a little more cleanup to do. My OCD is yelling at me. Let me get a little bit more going here. And then we're gonna start grill technique. Trust me, we're gonna get there. I'm looking at the pot. We're doing great. I got like 45 minutes uh, from Facebook left, you know, for a maximum of two hours if you guys are up for all of that. Um, so what we are looking at, oh, one more wipe here. What we're looking at next is grill technique, okay? Now that the stock is going, you know, we'll, we'll touch that again a few, few minutes. Let, let's go over that stock again, by the way, okay? I put in the bones. I put in mirepoix, the carrot, celery, onion. I put in bay leaf, thyme, peppercorn, garlic, okay? Cover with cold water, bring up to a boil, reduce to a simmer. Bloop, 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 okay? As it simmers, you're going about two to four hours on chicken. If you're doing like a, a white stock with like beef bones or something like that, veal bones, anything like that, those are like six to eight hours. Um, and if you're doing veggie, it's like 20 minutes, okay? Um, uh, once this comes to that boil, skim the scum using a perforated spoon. That's a spoon with holes in it, okay? Um, and so uh, get all that scum off of there um, and just gently simmer. If you boil it, it's gonna be cloudy. If you leave the scum on there, it's gonna kick back into the stock. It's gonna be cloudy and funky, okay? So um, that's basically stock making 101 right there. Uh, it, it's pretty simple stuff. It's pretty simple. So uh, next, let me scoot some things around and I'm gonna get a, a grill pan over here. We're not doing official grill. I'm really just showing you guys how to get a grill mark on something. That's kind of what's important to me right now. Uh, and so let me kind of move things around, getting the stock pot out of the pole position here. Moving that over. And then I'm gonna move my grill pan over. And you guys have seen these grill pans, I'm sure. All the Hollywood celebrities use, use them, okay? I think Gwyneth Paltrow, famous for her grill pan testimonials, okay? And so uh, you can see it just has the grill in there. It's, it's just gonna give us some grill marks, but this isn't gonna give us that real grill flavor. Burt Bach knows what I'm talking about. Roberto Ray is out there. You guys know this ain't gonna give me that real grill flavor, but I can demo a grill mark for you, okay? So that's what we're gonna talk about. Now, when we are grilling, uh, there's a couple of, it's, it's not really a cooking technique, it's more of like just a series of tips is the way I kind of look at it, okay? Uh, first of all, what I'm grilling, it tends to be something that is like um, sized for a portion, you know? It's for an individual like a steak or a chicken breast or something along those lines. I'm getting some more wine while we talk, okay? Um, uh, so that's the first thing. As a grill guy, I would come in on the job and, you know, I'd kind of check out my meat situation and kind of go through, oh, I need about nine chicken breasts and I need oh, 12 you know pork chops or whatever it is I'd get all my meats portioned out and ready to go some of that stuff I would marinate ahead of time especially if it was kind of like a shouldery type cut or something it might be a little tougher so if I marinate it ahead of time it'll kind of uh, uh, tenderize it but another thing about marinating you know uh, we talk about seasoning often you know back in the day when I first started cooking there was a lot of talk about you don't want to pre-season your meat I talked about this in another quarantine kitchen but nowadays um, we have, you know, we have come to know that that if I pre-season my meat, it's kind of like brining that meat and the meat retains moisture a little bit better. It's not going to lose as much moisture throughout the cooking process. So, um, uh, so less moisture loss means a juicier piece of, meat, piece of meat. Plus, we are seasoning ahead of time, so the seasoning has time to penetrate into the meat. So that is a win-win situation is what that is known as, okay? So nowadays, we pre-season our meat. And I'm going to do my little demo here just with the chicken breast and then the rest of this is for for my dinner, okay? I just kind of want to show you grill marks, okay? So uh, let me go ahead and grab my grill, uh, uh, my breasts here. They're monsters, as I said. In fact, I might uh, need to, I'm gonna kick my oven on because uh, these are monsters. I should have done this earlier. Um, we're gonna kick this oven up uh, to about 450, maybe 475. My oven's not super uh, aggressive. And I will be finishing uh, my chicken breasts in there, okay? Now, I've got my two chicken breasts here, and let me just kind of uh, show them to you. There we go. I think I'm settled now. 
and I need to get them salted. Now, when I salt these guys, I'm gonna salt the daylights out of this skin side, okay? I want this skin side to get super crispy like chicken bacon by the time it's done. We were talking about this on duck day too, okay? So you're gonna see a lot of salt on that side, and you might see a lot of salt on the other side as well. As you grill something, half of that salt is falling off of it anyway. So I, I, I always gotta work my students, man, season the daylights out of this stuff. You're losing 90% of it on the grill or in the saute pan or whatever, okay? So you're gonna see a good crust of salt on this thing and we just broke down this chicken but ideally I'd have done that ahead of time and I would have really uh, um, you know uh, uh, let that salt kind of uh, work into it over a couple hours of time probably I'm gonna give it a little flip here a little flip a -roo. be very careful not to infect your salt with your disgusting chicken like fingers okay and there I go some more salt on this side like I said, a bunch of this is gonna fall off in that grill pan. But we gotta get some penetration here. And I'm gonna work that salt in there with my chicken hand. Notice I had one hand for seasoning and I had one hand for chickening. That's a thing. I think I'll get a tattoo on each hand. Seasoning, chickening. Oh, my mom would be so proud. Okay, lots and lots of salt on that skin. It's gonna be like chicken bacon. It's gonna be super, super crispy, okay? Now, let's talk about grilling a little bit while I wash up here, uh, or after I wash up. I can't talk and do something at the same time. I'm terrible. Like talking and writing on a ch chalkboard at the same time, forget it. <laughs> oh, good times. Happy hour. Who's out there? Nicolette, let's take a little sip there. Roberta, you as well. I owe this to you. Paltrow is a vegetarian. Well, you better believe she is. She is after talking to me. Oh yes, mm, delicious. Back to grilling. So I've got my meat portion. I've got my meat pre-seasoned, marinated, however I wanna take it. Now this time I just threw salt on there because my marinade is in my compound butter that we made in the beginning of this thing. That's what it was all about. It's coming full circle. That's the way this stuff works, right? Um, so I have got lemon in there. I've got thyme, I've got uh, uh, salt, I've got pepper, I've got lemon juice, and most of all, I've got butter with, with all of the delicious magical things that butter will bring to the table, right? As this is grilling, I am brushing it with butter and that is where that flavor is gonna come. The butter is the vehicle for my flavor, <laughs> excuse me. So um, the second part about this is I wanna oil the item that's going down. I don't wanna just uh, season it. So I'm gonna kick a little bit of grapeseed oil on it. This is a, an oil I've been using in a lot of my classes when I need a, a good high heat. I'm not trying to impart a flavor, it's a neutral flavor. I wanna taste my lemon thyme butter on here. I don't wanna use my bacon fat that I have. It's gonna taste like ham, okay? So um, a little bit of fat. We season the item, we portion it, and we oil that item. Next thing, we oil the grill itself, okay? So the grill needs to be seasoned, and you've heard about like seasoning grandma's cast iron pans. Most professional grills are made out of cast iron. You go to Home Depot and you have those shiny grills, you know, all the grill part is all shiny, it's all stainless steel. That's like the worst cooking medium there is, stainless steel. That stuff does not, uh, uh, heat does not resonate with stainless steel, right? And so um, I, spent years trying to find a grill with with um, uh, cast iron in it like we have at work, right? With those cast iron grills, you work oil into those things and you keep brushing them and keeping them clean and you work oil into them and they get shiny like grandma's cast iron pan and that's like a Teflon surface. That's what you want. This cast iron pan is going to be much like that. So again, you want your chicken portion seasoned and oiled and you want your pan or your grill oiled as well. We call that seasoning too. It's not with salt though, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just get a little paper towel here and I'm gonna get a little of that oil and I'm just gonna roll, uh, pour it in my pan. And not so much that it's gonna like be full in the bottom, but just a little bit of oil. And I'm just gonna brush the surfaces of where the lines are, right? Where the chicken's actually gonna be touching. The, touch, the chicken's not touching the bottom of this pan. It's just touching those little rails in there, right? what I call the tines, the tines of the grill, like a tine of a fork, okay? So now that I got this grill 
uh, uh, oiled. Another thing is it needs to be super hot. So I'm turning this dude up to about 11 right now, okay, uh, uh, out of 10, okay? It's really, really cranking. I've just brushed it with oil. I've got my item brushed with oil, and I um, am looking at the grill, and I can see the smoke just rising off of this thing. I can tell that it's super hot. So I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to pick up a chicken breast, and I'm going to lay it on down. 